Okay, I was always a big tank fan, probably starting with Kelly's Heroes because of how just three tanks emerge from a tunnel and just utterly shatter an entire area and everyone in it without sustaining a scratch, while of course chilling to some calming tunes as they do so. And later in the film, the face-off against the Tiger Tank that has been demolishing the entire town, and Clint, Telly and Donald pull a spaghetti western face-off against it. My action man tanks were pretty much my favourite toy of all as a wee one, which of course means I have to mention how my love of cats arose again with the undeniably menacing and epic entry of the only working tiger tank in the world in Fury. Alright, all tanks, move forward! Stay abreast. Let's go right at him. Let's go right at him. Order, left flank. Let's bomb right his cock something. Right stick. Take the right flank. Ah, uh, got out of the Get on in. Boys, it's you. Come to me. Stay low. Stay low. He's coming out. Fire fire. So, now that I am building an Astra Militarum Force... You could probably use some armor. Why, yes, Oddball. Yes, I could. Now, the Lehman Russ. No offense to Games Workshop, but I'm just not a fan of this model. It's too World War I. It looks primitive even for the superstitious backward Grimdark Imperium. I already have enough of a Great War vibe with the Krieg, so this is just a little too much. Fortunately, Station Forge to the rescue with their battle tank, and it even has a Grimguard in the turret. Perfect. Printing. The first one came out grand, and all excited, I glued it all together, even glued down the turrets and such. Sorry, just got over enthusiastic. It's my first tank since airfix kits when I was a wee sprog. I made the variant with the LAS cannon and some extra spare tread and dozer blade that you can't fit on it if you have that little forward sponson with all the other loadouts, but then I got to thinking, I might be able to get the LAS cannon into the variable mix after all. So printing more tanks, the next one, the left side of the body came out really bad, all open and messed up underneath. I cleaned up the printer, checked for loose bits in the resin and tried again. Same thing, except this time the print finished early when a power outage from a storm knocked out my electric. I figured I can repair all of this with green stuff. The damaged tracks on one side are visibly damaged, but I can conceal that with an oil drum or something like that because most of the floor is underneath and unseeable, and it's not like tanks do stunt jumps. I stand corrected. Okay, it's not like you ever see the bottom of a tank anyways. Okay, fine, whatever, I'll reprint. First, I have to find out what's going wrong. I hope it's not my printer, I just got this damn thing. So I resorted to asking online and apparently the supports on this file aren't always reliable because they are too thin and they advised adding heavier ones. Okay, I downloaded the unsupported files, opened up Lychee, dragged and dropped the piece, rotated it 90 degrees on the blue z-axis so that it would fit on the plate and then tilted it 45 degrees on the red x-axis. I added auto-generated light supports and then using the fouled print as a reference went over all the areas where the print fouled, following the cracked and open areas and selected a bunch of supports probably around one in three and then when I felt like I had enough coverage clicked on heavy to upgrade them. Okay Let's see how this goes. And it came out fine. Not hollow, so it used a bit more resin, but not as much as continuing fouled prints do. Plus, now it has a, a sort of decent heft to it that feels appropriate because, you know, tanks are heavy. Cutting away these heavy struts resulted in some minor scrapes and damage, but my plan to hide the broken tracks will still be up for hiding this much more minor cosmetic trauma. Assembly. I super glued the two bodies together, added the turret base, and this time I'm leaving the turret loose so we can just slot it in and still swivel it about. 
On goes the container at the back, and then on go the big chunky exhaust vents, and I'm going with closed hatches for the turrets for the other two tanks that I'm putting together. The first method of track damage concealment is a drum from a Mechanicus terrain set I acquired. Aquila or Skull outwards. It's Krieg, so I'm going with the skull facing out. The Sponsons. The axle inside of these has two pins, so in theory I can make it unglued so they too can swivel. First, magnets. Drop the magnets on the drill bit to make sure they are the right size. Drill a pit in the axle, which is easy because there's already a rectangular slot. So you're pretty much just changing the shape of the hole. So I enclosed the axle within the sponsons and then glued them to the sides of the tanks. The guns. Chop off the tab with an X-Acto and it often leaves a little pit behind, which allows the drill perfect purchase. A dab of glue in the hole, push the column of magnets towards the axle, and when they repel, push it into the hole and wipe aside so that your thumbnail rides along, continually keeping the magnet in place until the column is out of range. Otherwise, they can get flipped by all those other magnets, ruining your efforts with an upside down magnet. Oh, almost forgot. The Laz Cannon is normally only in that singular build. It's not one of the loadout options for the front turret. So I took a Laz Cannon from a Sentinel file, uh, link in the description, and cut off the rectangular block from a spare sponsored weapon, added a magnet, and just glued the Laz Gun to it to give me the loadout for my other two tanks. Now, breaking out the Mr. Dissolved Putty. I grabbed the brush and used it to fill some of the larger seams and gaps, mostly between the two tank bodies and around the forward gun housing. Arranging the guns on a metal ruler so that they're sticking straight up and are available from every direction right away, I dropped everything in a hiking boot box and gave this arsenal a layer of army painter primer all over. So, what have we got so far? Not too shabby. Oh, and on the third tank, I had printed the two hatches that are the option if you don't go with the sponsons. And so I used them as armored mud flaps. I was going to add just one, but if you're adding a mud flap to one track, why would you not do the same for the other? Right, let's get to painting. Rather than annihilate my pot of Abaddon Black Citadel paint, I used a normal black acrylic to coat the entire tank, the turrets, the main guns, and all of those smaller ones as well. Then, Iron Hands Steel Base. Get a little on the tip of my dry brush, wipe the excess off on my thumb, and then start applying to all the edges and fixtures, giving it a nice brushed steel appearance. And once the main tank was done, onto the dozer blade and the turrets and all those other guns. Now, to try out transfers for the first time. In Illustrator, I arranged a bunch of images and numbers. My regiment is the 26th Golgothan. Commonly, Golgotha means place of a skull. It's the hill where Christ was crucified. It's an excellent book about a Britain that has been invaded and occupied by the USSR. And it was an armor-plated Tyrannosaur in ABC Warriors in 2000 AD. And now, it's also a regiment of the Death Corps of Krieg. I printed these ones on some clear transfer paper and these ones on white and then blasted them with varnish to lock in the ink and then I cut out the transfers. The images are arranged along the top of each page because if they don't work, I can just move the paper deeper into the printer and print on the next area just to get more out of my experiments. The clear transfer paper doesn't show well on the black and silver of the tank, so I painted a corn red strip on the side of the turret and on the front just above the main gun. Okay, a swipe of micro set on the model, I dipped the transfer into water and placed it to the side of where I want it to go. A swipe of the micro set to the decal and in a few seconds it can be slid aside. Some suggest the brush, I was happy with the tip of an X-Acto. Take the paper away, maneuver it into position, and then use the brush to even it out. That's the bull done. On to the regimental symbol, a stylized skull with the regimental number and name. Another swipe of micro set, dip the transfer in water, drop it to the side of where you want it, wipe with more micro set, and then in a few seconds, an X-Acto lets you shift it off the paper and into place. The red paint makes it nice and visible. Subtle, not garish. And then the arrow along the barrel of the big cannon. Each of my tanks is gonna have a name. There's Zestora, Orstauer, and Firstloss. 
and these will be going on the other side of the turret. And I had three sets of numerals ready to go for the sponsons and on the back of the turret. Then Thunderhawk Blue dry brushed on the Kriegsman, the sandbags on the first tank and on the blankets rolled up on the side of all three, which gets the wrinkles and straps and the rolls at either end. Then a lighter touch of Dawnstone to the same locations to add a little more flair. We need to talk about your flair. Oh, it's plasma time. Breaking out the white scar, I painted the areas that will be glowing, the vents in the barrel and the main energized areas. Once dry, some touches of Abaddon Black to where the brush went a little too far up on the sides, and once dry, Tesseract Green, washed around, pushed up against the sides and painted into the vents and into the barrels, basically over all the white scar, and then I left it to settle and dry. Yeah, nice and radiant. Then a very light dry brush of white scar on the ridges and we're done with the plasma. Now, I am basing my army in sand from Red Rocks, Nevada, so these tanks are rumbling around in the stuff, which gets absolutely everywhere. I am shaking sand out of my climbing kit for weeks after a Red Rocks run. In my boots, in my books, in grigris and clothes, you can even hear it in quick draws. Anyways, I've been using a dry brush of Cadian Flesh Tone for boots and such to simulate dustiness. So that's what's going to be going on this armor. This was a lot of fun. Load up the brush and apply to the underside and the tracks, shedding paint so I can dry brush up along from below, focusing on areas near the ground and near the tracks, and then a very light touch across forward facing areas. At the back, applied around the base of the exhaust pipes and the underside especially, and on the drum and the mud flaps. So here they are, all dusty and ready to get stuck in. Then the metal ruler goes back to the box for a layer of varnish, tip it over and apply to the other side, and then bring in the main body of the tank and give it a blast from every angle, and then the turrets and the guns. Done! Three Krieg variant Lehman Russ battle tanks. A little different to the standard Astra Militarum pattern, but Krieg do tend to get away with things other forces of the Imperium cannot. Currently these are deployed to a desert environment. These armored juggernauts have been rumbling around engaging the enemies of humanity and vaporizing them with plasma cannon, incinerating them with multi-melters and flamers, or just shredding them with explosive shells and bolts. For the Emperor!